Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're doing part four of our live stream today. Um, for those of you who watched before, you'll notice we have new background music or background music for today is Flowers by Away. I'm so serious. I did not make up that name. It's Away. A open bracket way close bracket um found it quite by chance today it's kind of new in mu YouTube's music library and I really like it it's quite calm I think a lot of us are probably tired of watching dreams so let's see what we're up to for today on my screen you're probably going to be looking at some background animation that I did off stream. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so you're looking at some background animation that we did off stream. This entire week we've basically been um, improving on the animations that we've already done. So, for those of you who are on Instagram, you would have seen me working on the jump title. And this is where it's at now. It's come a long way from where we left off on stream. So, I'm kind of proud of that. I'm actually exploring the limitations of this 2D rig that I've set up. Um, let's see. So I found some limitations with it off stream that I'm going to tell you guys about just in case you decide to set up your own characters and actually show you the solution that I came up with. I kind of came up with this because I was working on a movie project and I got the idea from a feature that's available in Toon Boom Harmony where you have replacement drawings that you can use. So what I did in After Effects, and I'm actually going to check if you guys can see this right now, and you can, but this is kind of blocking your way, so I'm actually going to take this, um, make it tinier, and just leave it in the corner up there so you guys can see it. And I'll zoom in so it's more interesting for you guys to look at. So we'll just do a full and total let's fit and zoom in and keep that playing so you guys have something more interesting to look at. So. The limitation that I ran into is, you see where my character does this little um, sort of hop where it catches itself right before it, um, it's going to tumble over. I had to actually change the rigging of the leg to achieve a smoother motion for that. Currently, and I'm going to pause it. The rigging of the leg, and for those of you who don't know what rigging is, it's basically a digital skeleton that you create for your drawing or a group of controls that determines how your 2D drawing is going to move in After Effects or in any other program. And I'm actually simplifying this because rigging is a whole field of study of its own in animation. But in earlier videos, maybe not this model, but another model, I'm actually going to just click it, hit the puppet tool. So you see these little yellow dots that popped up? They're what um, control the bending motion. And if I click on the... I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see it, but I will probably make sure that you can. If I click on the leg and I move it into here, I think you should be able to see that. Did I make it smaller? You can't actually see that. It's not working. So I'm just going to undock. So what you guys aren't seeing is 
there's an isolated window on my screen with this slug on it that has a rotation point. Not here, but here. And what that allows me to do, and I'm just going to hit rotation on this leg so you can see it, is it allows me to essentially rotate this leg from the hips. And that's been working pretty great for me, except I ran into an issue when I got further into my timeline, which is here. So this movement right here where it switch it transfers its weight from one leg to another and I actually caught it at a weird point here because you can see where the sock has kind of become undone so in this motion right here where it transfers its weight that's actually very hard to do when your point of rotation is at the hip because since it rotates from the hip it moves the base leg or it moves the um, point of contact, which is not something you want to happen because transfer of weight is usually a pivot on a fixed point. So I tried editing it to, let's see. I tried editing it to, I actually brought up the whole grid and I tried animating so that this foot would move and it's just a whole lot of work that didn't need doing but eventually i remembered something from when i was working as a freelancer on a movie agua it's a um it's a three minutes i believe it's still three minutes i actually haven't seen the movie yet even though i worked on it but that's a whole different story for another day. Um, it's a short movie in the Caribbean. It's actually, I believe it won in a category for Kings 2 and 3. Um, I'm really, really bad at this. I should know. I should know this uh, like off the top of my head, right? But <laughs> yeah, so... In Toon Boom Harmony, there is a feature that allows you to have replacement drawings um, for your your animation. So you can, I could have this foot is viewed sideways, but I could have a frontal view of it or a three quarter view of it. You know, to really open up the possibilities of animation. I'm not sure that's the word I was looking for, but that's the word I have. So, um, I didn't really need a new drawing. What I needed was a way to essentially move the anchor point of the drawing without you, the viewer, seeing it. Which is a problem I'm sure lots of people, not only in After Effects, but if you're new to animation, are, is, are, give me a second, my English is failing me. A lot of people will, there we go, will run into. So I'm just going to tell you how I solved the issue. So what I, um, what I did was I essentially cut the layer. So what you're seeing in this area is where I cut the layer. And you'll see these um, images here. Now what you have here are a bunch of leftover... Um, well, you have here a bunch of leftover keyframes, which I can actually delete because this layer doesn't exist until this point. I can actually delete it and save my computer some processing power. I'll leave these just to ensure that my leg and everything is in the exact same place it was before I, I... Okay, so you see I deleted some stuff and now it's behaving funnily. So I'm just gonna undo some things and see if it will work. Or maybe I'm just discovering a...
Oh, I know what the problem is. Or I believe I know what the problem is. But I am getting distracted. Okay, so I'm getting distracted. I'll probably fix that, but what I did was I cut the layer, I moved the anchor point on this layer, and then leaving the keyframes the same, or they should be the same, because why not? Okay, that sock needs repositioning. Yes, but leaving the keyframes the same on both layers. I'm just going to delete that. I was able to create an animation where I could have two different anchor points for the same drawing. So I essentially created my own replacement drawing. So that's one issue I ran into. The there's another issue I'm going to work on on stream today, which is the transfer. I want the character to do a little hop, and this will be an interesting thing. I'm probably going to add this out. Maybe I'll watch some references that you guys will not see. <laughs> Maybe some Charlie Chaplin. He's the king of silent comedy. He's a good reference, right? So there's that. Um, alright, so moving on, I did that. I also did what you guys were looking at earlier, this balcony animation with the puppet tool. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Um, it's a really simple animation and again I t told you guys that I did everything in uh, I did everything in Illustrator. Everything meaning all the drawings. These are all vector images from Illustrator. And in order to get this, I broke each drawing. I've been taking each individual object out of the main drawing, which is this big one. This huge one right here. I, I call it huge because it's a lot of layers that I'm dealing with. This turned into a much bigger project than I suspected it would. So, I've been taking all the layers out of this um, large drawing and separating them into their own individual After, uh, not After Effects, Illustrator files so that I can bring them into After Effects and animate them separately. It's basically just breaking down a bigger project into um, smaller, more manageable sizes so I don't have to be filtering through all of this and so my laziness won't act up. What I mean by my laziness won't act up is it's easier to deal with seven layers than it is to deal with um, 34 and then some because much of what I'm breaking up now is actually this layer called middle ground and you'll see that every person in it just basically disappears. So I'm breaking each of these people up into their own individual layers and then creating rigs for them so that we can have more manageable pro projects. And I did the balcony, the ambulance, I did another um, person. I don't know if we're going to get to that person today, but I'm definitely going to start on some of the background animation. Yeah, I'm definitely going to start on some of the background character animation. So that... I'm sorry, I got distracted. So that I can get a... How do we put it? Yeah, so that we can get some more movement going on in this. So it'll be a more interesting animation to watch. So I'm just going to put fit and check to see. I'm just checking again to see what you guys are seeing. I'll make it bigger. And if you look in the background, you'll see the animations of the clouds moving. 
and you'll see the towels on the balcony moving. I'm gonna do some editing to that tree. I'm thinking maybe doing some experimentation with some 3D layers. Um, but basically that um, will... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I was thinking of all the problems that are gonna come with a 3D layer, such as having to replace the background behind the doors that I would want to open. I was actually thinking of even video angles later. And for those of you who are watching, you know I get really excited about the potential of pro um, projects. Um, and so, you'll see. I actually am going to take out the middle ground for you. You'll see that I separated out the checker railing, added a dent in it, just to give it some more personality. Um, and also because I wanted to see what this jumping animation <clears throat> excuse me um would look like outside of sorry behind of this checkered railing or behind the checkered railing excuse my colloquialisms so this is actually my favorite animation for today Ooh. this is my favorite animation so far it's the simplest but it's the simplest however I like it because it's very calm it also matches this music so let's get started on our main thing for today Sorry, I just needed a sip of water. I think I was dying. So, we've basically done the balcony. I think I'm gonna do one from scratch, which would be I'm gonna import it now the ambulance. So, I made some changes to the ambulance. Uh, I've been making a mistake lately where I keep trying to import the, for those of you who are familiar with After Effects, I keep importing it as footage instead of as composition, which um, can get really annoying real fast. So I'm just going to drop this in there and you'll see that I changed the ambulance window to green. see if I can get a there we go so this is the ambulance light I'm just gonna take that and move that up here and Oh, I forgot the siren. So I'm just gonna see, because I have another ambulance down here. Just gonna click that layer and see what's up with that. Let's see what's up with that. So The ambulance behind this is actually one layer by itself. I'm just going to take that off. Turn that off. And this ambulance is here. Now the siren itself is separate from the ambulance. So I'm just going to... Where is the siren? The siren itself is right here. I'm just going to parent that siren to our new ambulance layer. And I'm going to take our old ambulance layer and just delete that bad boy. So that's us for now. I'm going to pair in the ambulance light to the siren so I'm not chasing the place down. And that will be the first of our rigging for today. Now 
when I click this layer, since it's a composition, it's going to bring up all of the... Where is it? There we go. It's going to bring up the, all of the layers for this, and you'll see this is here. So, some things we can't see. We can't see the... Oh, okay. Yeah. We can't see the siren, and we can't see the shadow, and that's going to be a problem for us. So, the first thing I like to do with these new compositions, and... It's something that I usually take out later, it's just for animating purposes, is I create a solid layer of white and I just move it to the bottom so I can see everything that's on the layer. And I lied, there's no siren in this layer. Haha. -ha. Yep. There is no siren in this layer at all. So, now that we're done with that, okay. So, now that we're done with that, we can move on to, let's see, the rigging. Now, rigging is basically this. And this, I, I am assuming this is going to be a quick rig because it's not a human being <laughs> or humanoid. So, middle ground, first of all, I'm gonna, just to see what that is, position, I didn't see anything move, so I'm wondering if this is an empty layer. It's looking to be, so I'm just gonna delete that. And that's a stray layer that was probably left from my breaking down of the object. So I've got the driver's unit, which is this one right here. I've got the shadow. And I'm basically going to parent the shadow's movement to the driver's unit. Or sorry, the med unit. So I broke the ambulance down into this area right here, which is where all the medical supplies are kept. And this area right here, which is where the driver is. And I'm going to parent this right wheel to the driver's unit. I'm going to parent the left wheel to the med unit. The med unit is going to be our body. The light is going to be parented to the driver's unit. The light is that light right there. It's a headlight. Window to the driver's unit. And the shadow will be parented to the med unit. And our white solid is nothing. So what we're doing right now, and I'm going to show it to you, is parenting basically links all of these objects together. So because everything else is connected to each other, what you have is when I move one unit, every other unit that's connected to it will move. And any unit that is the parent controls the child. So... The med unit is the ultimate parent. It has nothing that it is controlled by. So once you move that, the whole object moves. The med unit is a child. It can move independently by itself. But if I move the med unit, that also moves it. So that's my quick explanation of parent-child relationships in animation. That can get a whole lot more complex. I'm not about to go into it. You can ask, and then I probably will, but for right now, we're just going to leave it. So, what are we going to do with this? My first instinct is to turn the wheels, but because this is a standing... How do I put this? This ambulance is going a total of zero miles per hour, so 
I've got nothing to do with this wheel except to vibrate it. Um, this would be an excellent use for Wiggle. But there is a certain personality I want to get. And so I won't be doing that right now. What I am going to do is... Ah, where's the window? Turn that window off just to see what it looks like. And apparent to this, I really don't want to work on this animation right now. So you see that white shape? That's because our ambulance has a white solid in it, so we'll take that off. Because I'm not going to touch the shadow right now. First of all, I'm going to lock it. I'm going to move back to this pose, and that's our thing for right now. And this is basically what we have. I want to create a sort of vibrating vehicle motion, which is basically an up and down um, sort of deal. But now I'm considering my anchor point. So we've got the driver's unit anchor point, and you guys basically won't be able to see what I'm about to do. I'm going to try to see if I can get it hooked in. And let's see. All right, success. Woo. Let's see, can I switch back? Will that switch it? Alright, so what you're looking at now is the driver's unit. This section right here is the anchor point. And this is basically going to determine where my unit rotates from. So I'm actually going to move that because I want it to rotate from here. So I want it to sort of do like a nose rotation. What I did right now was I imagined several car crashes that I have seen <laughs> and how cars stopped. I will probably off screen go back and watch a lot of videos about cars and all of these things. But for right now, please bear with me. I am about to do that. Done. All right, and we're back. So every time I do that, I have to go through a very specific procedure to get or the rest of our thing back. So I'm just gonna make that smaller, 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 smaller. So you guys can see what else it is we are up to today. And there we go. And we're basically good for it today. Um, I think that's basically it. Okay, so let's see what we're up against. Uh, stop thinking of the tedium and just start. So we're gonna start just by with the med unit, I'm going to hit position, rotation, do I need scale, or maybe anchor point and rotation. Now anchor point has the sort of the same function as position, except I believe I was told there was no distortion. I've never actually used this before. And so this is about to be as new to you as it is to me, but I'm gonna change it like, I'm gonna treat it, not change. I'm going to treat it like a substitute position. So we're just gonna do that. And 
We're just gonna lock that point right there, and that's our base point. Now, we wanna see what our highest point is, so we're gonna turn that, that on. And I'm actually gonna separate the wheels for a bit. Why? Because the wheel. I don't want the wheels. It's just gonna look like the ambulance is moving up and down and not like it's vibrating. So I want the wheels to stay in their the same position. Position. I'm gonna add a separate vibration to them later. And let's start. So we're gonna go here, and the highest point using the y-axis. Where are you going? Let's take that shadow out too. Let's leave that. Oh, I locked it. Let's take the shadow off of Oregon. And let's go to the highest point of this first. So the highest point of this is going to be here. And then since that's the highest point, let's find the lowest point I want it to go. That's going to be here. Now I kind of want it to be like a quick rotation, but I'm doing this more spaced out just so that I can see what the movement is. And then if I bring it close, whoops, let's go back. Grab that, click Alt, minimize that distance all the way, bring this back, and I'll just have this on loop to see how it looks. Okay, so After Effects needs a little bit more frames than how much I gave it. Let's try that. Move that all the way here. Well, first of all, it looks jerky. And that's we're going for jerky, but that not that jerky. So we're we're gonna try easy ease and see if it makes a difference. Nope. Let's move it closer. All right, so that's looking exactly almost. It's still a little bit shaky. I think that high point might be a little bit too high, but that's the basic vibration. And this is gonna be a loop, so I wanna get this loop right. Um. Let's see. So we've got the ambulance vibrating. And I kind of want this to have a little bit more personality. So let's stop that. Do that. And move this out here. And whoops. First, let me just mark where this is. This is a 12 frame loop with three keyframes, four keyframes, and four key poses. So let's add some personality to this now. And move that back. Okay, so first of all, I want to move that high point way down. So let's move that just a little bit down. That low point is there. Let's see. Do that. And the, the joys of animation. Oh, the monotony. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm actually having fun right now. Uh, 
All right, it's there. Let's just look at that motion. That's the basic motion. Okay. And let's move that there. All right, so I'm thinking what I want to do is move that out some more. And here, I want to create another high point. Why? After I just minimize the other one. So we're there. gonna go really close to here gonna I don't want to copy the low point lies I do just to make sure I'm not surpassing anything so I want it to be like Phew. I have a very specific timing in mind and let's see so we've got a bigger drastic motion and then a more routine motion coming through here and this is just adding some personality to it and I'm gonna show you what I mean right now instead of that standard okay down up down now we add some personality to it move that there and I'm moving this back it's still supposed to be a standard 12 frame. I say standard like I actually looked that up, right? I did not look that up. I just think it's half a second. So. Alright, so it's not looking much different, so I'm actually gonna make that do, 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 do. high point higher, much higher, that low point much lower. And let's see how it looks now. Okay. There we go. See that right there? Look at that beautiful work part. I'm joking. So, that's basically the movement. Or rather, the. Is it lateral? No, longitudinal. There we go. That's a longitudinal movement. Don't I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's basically the up and down movement. We're just gonna continue to add some more personality to this. Um, so we're gonna stop that. I'm gonna come in here. And now we're gonna have some fun with anchor points and rotation. So we're gonna do that. That's our base movement. We're gonna come into here. We're gonna come all the way over Herschel. And there we go. And that's our base rotation. So we're gonna come to our little friend here. This was anchor point right here. And first of all, Put that right on the frame. Ah, oh, look, it's bowing. <laughs> so, haha. <laughs> this is going to require some work with the med unit. Now, you two are basically controlled by each other, so. Copy, paste, and 
Oh dear, what is going on here? I'm just gonna move that down. No, you're just misbehaving now, so I'm just gonna move you back up to where you're supposed to be. Over here. Look at it. Well, let's see how it looks. <laughs> it looks so much... It looks better. <laughs> it looked really weird. The reason I'm laughing is it looked quite weird, quite strange prior to this um, when I was doing it slowly, but seeing it at real time is actually helping me a lot more. So what I just added was essentially secondary motion because the med unit and the driver's unit have the same motion. However, and I'm actually gonna pause this, I think this will be better if I did this if I move this here and this here because going off what I've seen of ambulance motion I believe one of these things I'm not sure I should probably look it up should be Okay, looks weird. Let's just undo that. There we go. And I think the reason for that is probably because I was attempting to have the med unit go after the driver's unit. However, given that the driver's unit is parented to the med unit, or maybe it's a problem with the rigging. So my animation consists of a lot of this problem solving right here. I'm gonna run some um some experiments right now. Let's see drivers unit. By switching the parenting. Alright, so yes, this makes it seem as if all the power is coming from the front of the vehicle and the back of the vehicle is kind of just along for the ride. Which was more of the that's more of what I was aiming for. Okay. So um, it's more of what I was aiming for. So we've got this right here, which is more of a da 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 da. -da. Yeah, more of a front-powered vehicle, and we're good. So I'm liking this animation, um, I'm thinking maybe I should have split the shadow into two pieces, but it's too late for the now. One for here and one for here, but as I said, it's too late for that now. I'm on stream. And we've got the windows, the lights. I'm not going to make this into a rickety old ambulance. I was thinking of uh, adding this animation to the windows and the lights of the med unit. But <laughs> I think if I did that, it would give the ambulance a more shaky personality than I think it probably should have. Considering it's supposed to be the vehicle that saved somebody's life. 
But this is what we have here. Oh, right. I forgot. This thing's on loop. So... Let's just go here. And draw that out. See what we're up against. Okay. So... Alright, so there's a new expression that I'm going to attempt to learn today. And it is the loop animation. Alright, so loop um the loop expression. So Oh wow. Alright, I'm gonna try the loop out expression on this. So I'm gonna go back here. Or I'm sorry, I'm gonna go Hui. Hui 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 hui. I'm going to click uh, why am I going to click? Give me a second while I check this. So I'm trying to use loop out. Give me a sec. I have this bookmarked. So there is loop out, loop out cycle, loop in, and loop in cycle. Alright, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click ambulance. I'm gonna click. Do I have to put it on each property or can I just put it on a. Yeah. Let it be said, guys, that I'm learning. I basically have no rotation property, so let's just use anchor point for now. And we're just gonna click loop out out and uh, ping pong Alright, so we're just gonna go through them today. So we're gonna hear ping pong. And I think that's it. And I think if I close that and I hit play. Okay! Yay! It works! So if I do the same thing. Um, the driver's unit is. Okay, I think I put it on the wrong one. <laughs> oh wow. So, let's click A, Alt, Loop, Alt, Shift, Ping Pong, Close, there we go. Yay. There we go. It works. Woo. Now that I've learned this, I can now go back and stop um the foolishness I did <laughs> before. <laughs> 
So I've learned a new skill today, guys. I learned a new expression. So now that I've learned that expression loop, I can apply it to these bad boys. And just loop the whole thing. So what I just used was loop out and I used ping pong. And what ping pong does is, and I'm going to read this. Ping pong loops back and forth between your first and last keyframe. So it goes from start to finish over and over and over. And considering that's the kind of loop that I was running by, or the kind of loop I created when I shortened the time to create. We've got that. So, yay. I'm actually going to add that to the description using loop out. Maybe I'll just add that. So today I added to my repertoire loop out. Let's explore loops some more. Mm -hmm. I'm having the best time right now. You don't even know. The absolute best time. <laughs> okay. So. Let's see where we go from here. Where we go from here is... Okay. So now that we've done our ambulance, which I'm so happy about, I'm gonna fix all those people off stream because it took me the longest time just to figure out where to put it on a seven, that is seven, yeah, a seven layered drawing. Yeah, it took me the longest time to figure out where to put it on a seven layered drawing. And... Maybe not you, but you, I'm going to loop everything out of you. It's important to talk to your art so they know exactly where they stand with you. So here... And we've done that. So I'm, I'm going to bring this up. Make it bigger. Move it in the center. And let's check what this looks like now. All right, so first of all, first thing we notice is that siren is moving nowhere. So I'm just gonna stop. And we're gonna go to First we're gonna grab siren, control, where's ambulance light, is it, yeah, I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna cut them, I'm gonna go into our ambulance layer, and we're just gonna paste them, we're just gonna drop them right in there. I deleted my solid layer which I probably shouldn't have done because I wanted to save some processing power. Not that it's affecting much of anything. And I don't see any of these things. So I don't actually know where this is. Position. I'm not seeing them, so I'm wondering if I made a mistake with copying. Or maybe it's positioned, but... 
So let's do that and hit reset. And there we go. I hit reset because I figured it was probably... I transferred it and it was probably somewhere out of my camera's vision. And since I didn't want to deal with it, or deal with searching for it, so we've done that. The light moved with it because, and I quote, it's parented. Isn't parenting a beautiful thing? So I'm going to move that there. And the siren I'm going to parent to the driver's unit. So wherever that goes, one is sure to follow. I'm going to look at the effects of this right now. So now that I know looping, I'm going to delete these keyframes. I'm going to, I say no like I'm an expert at it. I'm not, but I'm going to do another loop out and I'm going to try another default movement. Right now, I'm just brushing the basics of what looping is. But I did ping pong, so I'm gonna try... I'm gonna try continue. I'm just experimenting to see which ones. Yeah, just experimenting to see which ones work. That's continue. And we're gonna play this and see where this one works. Okay, so continue is definitely not what we're looking for. Not what we're looking for at all, but I'm going to hit alt, shorten the timing between this. And we're going to go from the beginning again. We've already used ping pong, so let's see what we can get up to here. We've got continue, basically just continues the effect, which is in a name. Let's try offset and see if that is a better... loop. So we're just gonna learn our expressions one by one today. And going back to the beginning. Okay, so offset works. The timing seems to be that it changes the duration by a little bit each time it goes. I'm going to read you the actual definition of it. The actual definition of offset is... The loop builds on itself by adding or subtracting the end value from the starting value and applying the difference to your final opening keyframes. Your final or opening keyframes. So even the expression itself, and I mean the explanation itself, admits that that's a confusing definition. So it says... um. As you offset, the loop continues movement without reverting back to the original starting value. So in this case, I'm guessing since this is glow and not a movement, it's either getting brighter or dimmer each time. Based on what I'm seeing, I believe that the glow intensity is increasing with each iteration. Yes, based on what I'm seeing, I believe it's increasing with each iteration. And so we have that. I'm going to click here. Whoops, still left that shape layer on. My forever mistake. Haha. -ha. And we go in here. 
Luke expression save so much time guys. That's literally hours of my life that I will never get back that has just been cured with coding. <laughs> I feel like I say that a lot whenever I talk about coding. Hours of my life that I will never get back. Whether good or bad. In this case, it's good. So what we've used here is two loop expressions and about 10 keyframes in all. So we have added the vibration of the ambulance. We have the offsetting, the offset, flashing light. And we've got our puppet tool on the towels and a combination of puppet tool and keyframes on our characters. So let's see what else we can get here. So this is shaping up to start to look like an actual tone. Now that I have looping expressions in my arsenal, I think I'm going to... Where is that? Oh. So I... I think I'm going to get that three, three words. Let's see how much English Mona knows today. Um, <laughs> let's see, actual words. So I separated both of these trees, this one and this one into their layers. So I'm going to imp import them now, position them and get rid of Oh, wait a second. I missed the shadow. I'll just import the trees and then we'll go back to that shadow and just move into the trees again. So I've got the left tree. I'm going to import them by retaining their layer sizes. And I've imported that. And I'm going to do the same thing to... the right tree and these are actually labeled r underscore tree and um whoops did it again stop it rude get lost so i imported this as footage and since I made the mistake, I'm just gonna let you guys know what importing as footage does. Just in case you're new and you don't actually know. So remember how I told you in After Effects, when you break up the drawings into layers, you get them as individual layers in After Effects? When you import it as footage, after Effects looks at you, laughs in your face, and undoes all your hard work, and gives you one layer. It can actually be beneficial if you have a object that has multiple loose pieces that you don't want to have to deal with. But since that's not the case, After Effects is just having a good laugh at us today. Or me. You can feel free to say just me. So, we're going to import the right tree, and then we're going to click out of this, and this is the one I imported as footage, so I'm just going to delete that so that I don't get it mixed up, and I'm going to rename this back to r underscore tree. And I've been a very bad girl. I haven't been sorting all of my imports. <laughs> um, let's just do that quickly. I'm going to create a new folder or bin. Depending. Oh, wait. Lies. I already have this folder. I just haven't been using it. So I have a folder where I store all the layers that come with my composition imports. 
So I'm actually gonna just grab that right now and move them in there. The reason I'm doing this is because it's really important to keep your layers clean, especially when you're working on big files and especially when you're in a team with other people. I've gotten some files before that were just let's let's not let's let's just not complete that sentence so that's compositions i think this file and this file are the same so i'm just gonna delete that and this is letters And this is my other where I mistakenly imported this as a as footage. So we're just gonna delete that. And now where is delete? There we go. So now we have this. We're gonna go into compositions and we're gonna get the left tree. We're going to switch from there. Whoopsie daisy. And you guys are actually seeing nothing right now. Give me a second. I am going to bring up the composition. There we go. Let's see. And now I'm going to minimize this. So there. Now that we have our composition window back. Um, let's bring in left tree. So left tree. Just going to drop you in there. Look at you. And holding space bar, I'm just going to slot that over. So there we go. And now I'm just going to drop the right tree within here as well. And holding that, I can just click and drag right tree. And then I fine tune it. I'm fine tuning with the arrow keys of my keyboard. And now I'm going to go into the tree layer and so you see that right there? It wasn't completely slotted into place. You can always align them, but it's not that important for me right now because there we go. Aha. So we've got the right tree and the left tree. We've finished the ambulance and we've got the balcony. No, this was something I tried to do on our last stream, which was to add a wave distortion to this or a wiggle effect on this. And the reason that didn't work was because, as I discovered later, I had not separated the layers properly. And so it was trying to wiggle the balloon as well as a string and that just wasn't working. So we're gonna start with the right tree. Ooh. And as you can see here, absolutely no rigging or parenting has gone on in this because I literally just imported it. Don't worry, it's a very, very easy. First things first, layer, new, solid. And I'm going to remember the shortcut for that right now because it's taking me time. The shortcut is Control Y. There we go. So it's Control Y. 
Let's see. I'm just gonna lock that to make sure I don't move the solid or do any strange thing with the solid layer. And let's just get right to it. The balloon string is going to be parented to the balloon. The branch is going to be parented to the trunk, as with the lines. So because I know a lot of things will be parented to the trunk, I'm just going to select all of them. So I know the lines are parented to the trunk. And left leaves also on the trunk. Where's the balloon? I'm kind of lost on if I want to parent balloons, which set of leaves I want to parent the balloons to, so I'm going to leave that for now. The middle leaves definitely parented to the trunk. The trunk by itself. The shadows. Okay, so watch this. I got smart. <laughs> I give each of these things their own individual shadow. Woo! Yummy. <laughs> I'm learning time saving. Be proud of me, guys. <laughs> I'm working smarter. There's a classmate of mine that would be in tears right now because of this. Because <laughs> I used to find the most ways, the hardest ways to do things. So, there we go. So, just gonna move the trunk to see. And yeah. But the balloon string should have been parented to the balloon. So, the fact that the string is moving and the balloon is not makes me wonder. Because that's the balloon. And you see this, right? The string is, should be parented to this balloon. So, if I move this. Something is not working as it should be. So I'm just going to put none on that. Did I accidentally parent it to something else? Let's see. Okay, so our balloon string is acting funny. It's acting shady, guys. We should be suspicious of it. We should be 112% suspicious of it. It's acting really shady. Um, okay. So. Hee 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 hee. I know why it's being shady. It's my fault. The balloon string is not on the layer that it should be on. Yeah. See, mistakes like these are ones that I should have checked for prior to this. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. I'm just gonna call this balloon string out. Just a little bit cursed for this session. Just a little bit. And, um... <laughs> After that, this is the second time I've tried to animate this string and an unexpected issue has popped up. Both times, my fault. So, we're just going to leave that for now. I'll leave the layer there. And I'm going to open Illustrator. And it's a really, really easy fix. You go into Illustrator, right? It's the good thing is the layer is already there. You go into your composition. In this case, I go into right tree. You put it in the layer. And I won't do this on stream because it's going to cause a huge disruption in my streaming. Because there's a link between After Effects and my... Um, 
I'm being told that I'm experiencing buffering. So, give me a second. All right, so I believe Let me see. Oh, it's because I opened Illustrator. So I'm just going to grab the balloon string and move it in there. File, save. And I'm going to close Illustrator and that should help my buffering issue. Now, what you will have noticed is And I say this because I just noticed it, that the balloon string disappeared. And the reason for that is I believe After Effects updated itself, so I don't know why it's not on the layer itself. But <laughs> why well, traumatize myself? I'm just going to save. And is it possible? I'm gonna check if it is. I don't know, but I'm just gonna right click this. And. Hmm. Nope. I was hoping there was like an update composition sort of thing but I'm not seeing it. Maybe there is and I just don't know. So I'm just gonna do the default thing, which is to do that. Take that. Delete. And just import it again. It's not that big of a deal. I'd rather fix a simple issue such as that early on than to do a lot of animation and to get myself into problems later. So you'll notice that because they're not in the same folder, this R tree doesn't have the two to it. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go into the layers composition. I'm going to delete those layers and just going to move that into there and move that into there. The reason I didn't import it directly into the compositions is simply because I didn't want it to develop another number. And secondly, I have two different, where are we go? Where are we going with this? Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. Yes. And secondly, because Ooh, keep moving. Give me it. Let me let me just do this and not talk for a bit. <laughs> this talking and working thing isn't going as smoothly as I would love it to go. So let's focus on that. So there's our tree again. I deleted the tree layer. Usually I just hide it. But like I said, the position of this one is not so crucial that it's gonna end my life. And I'm wondering if I turn middle ground on. Okay, so there is a surprise waiting for you guys. There is an asset that's missing from here and I think it's probably because I separated it out. So when I add that in, it's a bit of graffiti that I did in After Effects. So here and here, there are two I, um, objects missing. The graffiti on a watering tank, that will be for 
another time. All right, so let's see. I think we can basically move on. I fixed the trees. Let me just check to make sure you guys are getting what I am seeing. And yes, you are. So let's move on. So this is where we were. And I've just done the trees. And scroll to the top. We were on the right tree. And zoom in on that. Control Y. I remembered. Okay. What you've got is in solids, there's a whole bunch of solids in here. They're all white. I should just delete them all. <laughs> or I should just leave the solids tab open and just grab one whenever I need it. Okay. All right, so let's see. Okay, guys, so the stream died for a minute there. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened. It's, um, I'm going to try my best with it. And let's see. All right. The stream health is not looking so good. It says I'm dropping frames. And I'm not quite sure why, so I'm just going to and that and okay so i am tr attempting to solve the dropping frames issue and let's see okay so it looks to be hmm. okay guys so we're having a bit of a technical issue give me um one minute oh all right, so unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a problem on my end. And that's kind of sad because that means I can't fix it. There seems to be an issue with the internet. I don't know if it's because a lot of us are using it, but we will see. So if you're having any lagging issues, just drop me a message in the comment. I will attempt to minimize the technical interruptions. But if you're having viewing issues, please let me know. And I'm going to continue. Okay. So, all right, moving into our tree. So now we have our balloon string. I remember where everything was, so I'm just going to select the branch to the here, parent them to the trunk. And for the left leaves, I believe that's also trunk. 
And let me just, yep, that's trunk. Middle leaf is trunk, right leaf is branch. And the balloon string is parented to the balloon. Left shadow is to the, where is it? Left leaf, middle shadow to the middle leaf and right shadow to the right leaf. So see, not that hard. And just to check again, not position, anchor point. Yay! Let's just move the balloon. I'm paranoid. Okay. There we go. So everything's um, parented right now. And I'm going to edit the... Oh wow. Yes, I'm going to edit the... Hmm. All right, I'm going to edit. Mm. I'm frustrated, guys. I keep dropping frames and I'm not quite sure what's going on. So let's come into here and we've done that. I'm just going to parent the balloons to the trunk for now, just so that when these things move, everything else moves. Honestly, it should be parented to one of these leaves, but I'm not quite sure what the animation for the tree is going to be yet. Um, I'm not going to fight with that. Let's fight with my old friend, the potted plant. So the potted plant actually has a turbulent displacement on it right now. And it's the amount. So I'm gonna... I'm actually gonna cheat it just a little bit. With the hair. Let's see. And and let's copy this and move it just a little bit to that side. Just a little bit to that side. And what I'm doing is here. So keyframe assistant, easy ease. And I want to draw this animation out longer. I want this animation to last as long as it takes these towels to get back to there. Whoa. Whoa. Rude. So I'm holding Alt. I believe that's Option on the map. And... That is way too strong out, so I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so that's a little bit too smooth for a plant, so I'm gonna take easy ease off. Oh. 
I think it's Alt and click. How do I change the types of keyframes again? Okay. So it's not Alt and click, it's Control and click. And you can change, you can take ease off your keyframes. So some of these might ease, so I think I'm going to ease this one in, ease that one out, select them all and bring that closer, whoa, rude. All right, so that's your generic moving bush. Again, I will add so much more personality after the fact. After the fact being off stream. And Yes. So I will add more off stream and I'll probably live stream it to Instagram. Usually what happens on that is I end up live streaming it to Instagram when I'm working off of stream days. But for the sake of keeping it more focused, we're going to deal with that. We're going to just move on from that. And what I'm doing now is I am just attempting to get this a little bit more under control. This being the frames that we're dropping. So let's just test what our thing is. Take you off and look at the full animation again. Okay, that animation of the bush looks weird. I think what I'm going to do is add some stretching to it, but not right now. I want to add some effects that I've really been wanting to do to this tree. That gotta move around and keep it interesting. So, there was an effect in uh, the GIF that I'm using for reference and it's run 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 the link is actually in the description of this live stream the GIF is run 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 and it's done by multiple artists one of them is supersonic from Shanghai channel and the other one is Wang to Mu and they did it on I believe theirs was also an After Effects, but give me a second and I will tell you. Lies. I cannot tell you. Why I cannot tell you? Because they didn't say. I'm looking at the project on Behance right now. Behance, Behance, however you wish to pronounce it, is your, your prerogative. But there's an effect that I saw on the trees there that I really, really love. And it's a kind of um, puddling effect. So I'm going to attempt to dissect it today. I do believe it's a sort of turbulence on the tree. So I'm going to go in here. And I like this layout because it puts my effects right in the middle of the screen and not in the corner and allows me to move this around. So I'm going to go back to my turbulence and I'm just going to, we're going to just try it on the bright leaves. So I'm going to hit E. I'm going to, actually no. First I'm going to take 
all of these off. And what I just did was make all those layers shine. I apologize for that. That is Princess. For my early viewers, you will know Princess is Dino's dog. And there we go. Now I can hit E and we can access all the benefits of turbulent displacement. Now I'm just gonna play with that. That is okay. Well, first of all, that boundary has got to go. That's not gonna work. So I think there is a extend past bounds effect that we can use for that, but not right now. We're gonna try and break down that effect that we saw or that I saw. Okay, so I'm gonna... The complexity seems to be it. And it seems to be a mixture between complexity and whoa, that's so cool for another day. Not right now. So it seems to be complexity. I'm going to do bulge and see what that one does. I think that could be a good size. I think at 30. That's rather good. Um, wasn't seeing that one, so let's try a wave as well. Wave, oops, spelling issues. Wave warp is another one, I think. On circle, nope. Smooth noise and a bit of width and okay so almost no height in this instance let's put the height at one and let's check out the width and then the waist speed and let's move the direction i'm gonna pin all the edges do that and nope Let's see what it looks like. Hit play. Alright, let's do the width at 3. Hit play. And it looks like a whole lot of nothing. So, n smooth noise. Let's do one. Okay, sign seems to be doing it. So maybe a mixture between the wave distort and the turbulence is what we're going to aim for on this one. Just to see if we can achieve the look that we were getting with the run, run, run gif. So we've got that wave effect. And I'm just trying to imagine in my mind what sort of, let's go all edges. Okay, so pin all edges gives a more uniform feel. If I pin none, then it sort of takes over the movement of it. This one has more movement, so I'm going to use it. Um, the direction is that way. Let's try a different direction. So doing it this way means that the sine wave is coming that way. And this is probably one of the only places in which you will use this branch of mathematics outside of the classroom. So we can get square. Triangle looks pretty good, but it gives a kind of sharp feel to it. Let's see what wave speed is. There we go. And we're just taking it in stride. 
I'm thinking if I slow wave speed all the way down. Now it looks like it's moving through molasses. Let's just leave it at 0.7. And let's see. And I believe you guys are way, 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 way behind me when it comes to this. So Let's check. Yes, it's lagging severely today. And I have... I don't know why it's lagging. I'm dropping amazing amounts of frames. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream and restart it. And it will still be right here. I'm going to leave the stream link inside the chat. We're always at the very same link. I was grandfathered into this link back when my username was Vintadoro. And Okay, so we seem to be back. All right, we seem to be back. We seem to be having a better time of this than before. Alright, the stream is back, but we still seem to be having the same technical issues. I'm not sure what's going on and it's quite frustrating me. Okay, so the stream has all but frozen. Um, we're gonna go to intermission as I figure this bit out. You guys can watch the lockdown gif. Um, Let's do All right.
let's switch to this. There you go. So that's gonna be our intermission for a bit while I try to fix our technical issues. This is how far we've gotten. So give me two minutes and I'll see if I can fix what's going on here because we are Okay, and we're back. So I reduce the latency of the stream in an attempt to see if I could uh, yeah, 
I reduced the latency of the stream in an attempt to alleviate the dropped frames issues. So we'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. Um, until then... Uh, I... I just don't know. It doesn't seem to be having the desired effect. Um... Alright, so... Okay guys, unfortunately today I will have to end the stream early. We're having severe um, lagging issues. I'm not quite sure what's causing it, what's going on. And uh, I don't think I can continue streaming like this. Thank you for your time. And I will try and see if I can make up for the stream tomorrow. <laughs>